If you go out on a sunny day with broken cloud, what you'll see is that light comes down at angles, diverging angles. And that means that we can follow those light rays back to the source and triangulate the sun's height above the Earth, proving that the sun isn't millions of miles away. But we can also perform physical experiments that prove that these crepuscular rays, as they're called, can only be recreated with a light source that is small and close. It doesn't take a genius to understand that the further the light source goes up, the more the sun rays would spread out and become parallel. The reason you'd even think that the sun... If the Earth was flat, wouldn't it be sunny all the time? Uh, I mean, have they ever even thought about it? Well, if you'd let me finish, the reason you'd even think the sun would be visible from anywhere on Earth is because of the images they have shown you. No one promoting this bull stands for truth. You can keep believing in your fantasy gas ball 93 million miles away. You can keep believing in your fantasy gas ball. While we keep experimenting to try and figure out what the sun actually is and how close it could be. With a local hotspot, it should be easy to comprehend that the sun is small and close to you. To put that in perspective, imagine a table two meters wide in a completely dark room and you're holding a, a small but very bright light bulb, 3.4 millimeters across, and you were holding it about 31 centimeters above the table. What you'd see is a circular pool of light directly on the table, you know, beneath the light bulb. But on the other side of the table, it would be in darkness. Now, it seems to our mind that um, if you were on the uh, other side of the table, you would see the light because it's, you know, above the, above the table. But that's not true because on that part of the table, it's in darkness, meaning that the light isn't physically reaching that part of the tabletop. Your senses are correct. We're also told that the sun sets because as the Earth rotates us away from the sun, it's actually obscured by the physical curvature of the Earth. That's not what we see. What we see is a local sun that is taking its local light with it. What happened to the horizon glowing across half of the world? Most sunsets are already fading through pollution, dander, chemtrails and fog. Plus, refraction will always make the sun seem like it's going down, as well as your perspective. It would appear to sink down in your field of view. That's perspective. The further away you get from it, the lower it will appear. It doesn't physically change its height. It just appears that way to your eyes until eventually it will disappear behind the horizon formed by your eye's vanishing point. Your eye has an angular resolution of 0.2 degrees and anything at that height will disappear beyond the limit of your sight. Many times we can see uh, time-lapse footage of the sun that shows it getting smaller as it moves away from us. Now, that's not always the case, since the sun is travelling around the North Pole. The closer you are to the North, the less you'll see the size change. But from locations beyond the equator, you'll absolutely see the sun's size change. And that could never ever happen if the sun was 93 million miles away. You wouldn't see the sun change at all. Our eyes cannot see farther than what they were designed to see but that is no reason to keep them closed. There's also an effect that occurs under certain conditions called atmospheric lensing, where the sheer amount of atmosphere, as well as the rain between you and the sun, acts like a lens and a prism, magnifying it greatly, which leads to another observational proof that the sun setting is an optical effect. At such times, when the sun is setting over the sea, and it seems as though it's half hidden by the horizon, then you can zoom in with a high-powered zoom camera and see that it's actually still above the horizon. It's just an optical illusion. Pay attention to the sun rays here. This alone proves our local sun, and so do these shadows. So what about the moon? 
we all witness the moon only illuminating the local clouds around it. That is because it is also a local light, but one with opposite effects from the sun. As we can all agree, shade from the sun is cooler than direct sunlight. But did you know, the moon's shade is actually warmer than direct moonlight? The moon produces cold light, something the science priests must have forgotten to teach us all about in school. Not only that, but at times, we can see stars through the moon, proving it is not some solid rock 238,900 miles away. In the 60s, true science regarding the moon was the shadow band topic of its era. I must consider myself to be an ordinary, humble person who wants to serve mankind with what we, man has striven for from the beginning of consciousness with truth and understanding of the world. Well, now, one thing, you have a theory about the moon, and we expect to be able to get observable facts about the moon fairly soon. Um, what is your theory? Well, uh, it is by now rather more than a theory. Uh, 10 or 11 years ago, I stated to various scientists that the moon is not a piece of rock, but it is a plasma, cosmic plasma. Gravitational theories are out, and the new concept of the cosmos and of its laws has to be evolved. This fact will eventually be confirmed. I made certain predictions which were already confirmed in 1958, and the situation now is coming close to a complete confirmation. What will be the result if you are proved to be correct in your theories? The result will be uh, profound and decisive, because if the moon is a plasma, no man will ever land on it. And the, the Americans and Russians are thinking of landing men on it. Oh, well, that will never happen. <laughs> People actually believe they walked on the moon, talked with Nixon, played golf, drove a car, and planted a flag. If you really believe that Neil Armstrong took the first step, then why do you give any credit to the cameraman already there waiting for him? <laughs> These guys were all U.S. military men coerced into acting. They wanted the money and power that came with the deal, of course. The problem was, they were terrible actors. They couldn't even pretend to be excited, knowing they were lying to the world. But the show had to go on. Michael Collins and Neil Armstrong rarely spoke in public about it. But there was one man not shy about lying to your face. The spokesperson for the Apollo deception. It's my pleasure to present Colonel Edwin Aldrich. No handshake, hug, smile. Their facial expressions are similar to those experiencing constipation, not celebrating an accomplishment. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is with a great sense of pride as an American and with humility as a human being that I say to you today what no men have been privileged to say before. We walked on the moon. I mean, they couldn't pay them enough to look up and smile? Society has always debated these planned Apollo events since day one, never imagining then that almost 50 years later, they haven't had the balls to fake another. As a tattooer, I talk to hundreds of people a month, and people are actually really starting to wake up with everything that's going on right now. I mean, People are sick of the lies. This is the biggest deception ever. The globe, the spinning ball globe is the biggest deception. If NASA was legit, literally all they would have to do is one thing. Take one of their satellites, zoom in on someone in Australia, upside down, driving a car. Or in the ocean, swimming upside down. That's all they would have to do, just zoom in. But they, they won't do it, they'll never do it. We have the, the, the footage of them in the space capsule, still in Earth orbit, covering up a small section of the window so you can see through the circle and making that look like that was the Earth. And like, this, is, this is a joke. I mean, how do people think this is real? I think it's hilarious that NASA will straight up tell you to destroy the technology to go to the moon. I'd go to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We used to, 
but we uh, destroyed that technology and uh, it's a painful process to build it back again. But they destroyed the technology and they can't go back. It's ridiculous. There's an interview with Buzz Aldrin actually where he's uh, being interviewed by a little girl. Her question was, why has nobody been to the moon in such a long time? <laughs> That's not uh, an eight-year-old's question. <laughs> That's my question. I want to know, but I think I know. Because we didn't go there, and, and that's the way it happened. After 50 years of lying to humanity and perpetrating this giant fraud, he's sick of a lie, and he, his conscience had a moment of humility, and his conscience wouldn't let him lie to this little eight-year-old girl. This silly globe model with water magically attached to it, spinning at a thousand miles an hour, shooting around the sun at 66,000 miles an hour, and rocketing through the universe at a half a million miles an hour is just the goofiest, silly thing that I've ever heard in my life. They want you to think you're a monkey man, a purposeless accident created by nothing that exploded from a big bang that was created, not by scientists, by a priest, mind you, while they steal $58 million a day in taxpayers' money to show you cartoons, CGI. They, they just have to show you enough of Hollywood and magic tricks and for you to believe the nonsense. It shocks me how many people actually believe they're floating above our heads. It's all filmed here on Earth. Outer space is a fantasy. The Earth is a stationary plane. Google bubbles in space. You can literally see bubbles coming up from these astronauts' helmets. It's ridiculous. When I, when I saw it, I was like, this is, this is a joke. So um, many times during um, spacewalks outside the International Space Station, we can see air bubbles rising up. Can you touch on how there are air bubbles in space? Um, air, can you be more specific, air bubbles? So yeah, like a lot of times during the footage, the NASA footage, you can see bubbles coming up out of the helmets or kind of from underneath you. Um, how do you explain bubbles in space? Yeah, often uh, on the outside of the space station, You'll liberate little pieces of, um, you know, there, it's a really harsh environment out there and the outside of the space station gets beat up pretty good. And sometimes, you know, you'll see just little flecks of paint or something that you might have disrupted floating away from the suit. And, uh, you know, that's generally what that is. I've never seen any kind of air bubble anywhere. Okay. Could it, could it be that you're filming in an underwater pool and you're not really out there? <laughs> All right, well, I just encourage everyone to look up Bubbles in Space, hashtag Bubbles in Space. Thank you very much. How's Bubbles in Space doing? How's what? Bubbles in Space? Bubbles in Space? Yeah. I don't know what that is. No? You Mr. Kelly? Yeah. Oh, yeah? You don't remember the question from Tampa about the Bubbles in Space coming up from the helmet? No. Yeah, you guys are in an underwater pool, remember? <laughs> we know, just remember. What's up, man? Can you side mine as uh, hashtag bubbles in space? Hashtag bubbles in space? Bubbles in space, brother. What's your word on that? What is that? Yeah, you were asked that two times in the past couple months, actually, about bubbles coming out in the uh, spacewalks. Oh, you're that guy. I'm not that guy. I'm one of those guys. Yeah, though, I'm not going to so. write that. And then, right, uh, thank you so much. There you go. Astronauts on harnesses as well. Anything to say about that? Do I have anything to say about it? Yeah. I have anything you want me to say about it. What do you want me to say? Uh, whatever your thoughts are. I just want your honest opinion. One um, second. About what? There's video evidence of guys hanging from harnesses in the International Space you know, Station. Sir, we need sure to keep going. There's a very long line. Thank you so much. Can you please step forward? Thank you, please step forward? Thank you so much. How about please step forward, selling please. a book of, of pictures Excuse with taxpayer security. money? Can How about that? Some, thank you with so much. Taxpayer oh, money? These were all on taxpayer you know dime, wasn't it? Not this one, but the picture book. Come back over here. You know what you can do? You can sell the same pictures yourself because they are public domain. Absolutely. They should be free to the taxpayers. They are free. Why are you selling it for $40? You can do whatever you want with them. 
Well, you're doing it a disjustice by, by ripping off the taxpayers. You know what? You hey, thanks for coming. Once people start realizing that we've been lied to on a grand scale, everything from the government to our schools, it all just comes crumbling down. It shocks me how many people actually believe they're floating above our heads. I've seen the International Space Station on YouTube and the astronauts floating about in it while they're orbiting the Earth at 17,000 miles per hour. Yeah. You can't do that unless you're in outer space. <laughs> Practice makes perfect. Give me another it's week. It's as simple as using a zero-G plane and strapping a harness to their belt. Then, just like Batman movies, they remove the wires using a computer. At times, the manipulation reveals itself. Green screen and blue screen technology cannot always be flawless. How can you keep denying this trickery? Here we see Europe's space agency at NASA's studios using a blue screen with grids. This technology has been used for decades. It works best for 3D and live manipulation. It's funny. Once NASA was caught red-handed, they produced a couple of senseless videos eight months later, trying to pretend like they always use them for science experiments, knowing damn well it was too late. Why do clowns defend them? There is no chance you could remove the background. These people lie to your face in the hope that you will not do your own research. NASA knows that most are too lazy to dig through its massive rabbit hole. Yet, in the meantime, they just love to rub it in your face. steal 52 million dollars per day from American taxpayers just to create a fantasy display of men orbiting their spinning pear-shaped space testicle earth. Their green screens are awful. When they are live and something glitches, their reactions are always priceless. I'm not sure why you globeheads keep defending all of this. Are you waiting on NASA to finally come forward? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, dear citizens of America. We here at NASA have been lying to you all since the 60s about our projects, operations, and missions into outer space. We have never been higher than lower Earth orbit. Right now, we only can fly in Earth orbit. That's the farthest that we can go. Every image we have shown you is CGI. Our films are mostly done in an underwater buoyancy facility. We have funneled millions of dollars per day to show you cartoons and false illusions. And we are truly very sorry. We will repay all taxpayers back the trillions of dollars we have stolen. This will be divided evenly between the citizens of America, as well as rebuilding poverty-stricken towns and cities all across America, as this department has finally come to an end. Isn't it weird that every space documentary, all the series, I had them all, Joe had them all, we watch them all the time, I try to remember all the about a neutron star and a super hypernova, I was me and Joe were Deep in space. Beyond Venus, 93 million miles from the sun, is Earth. It's great oceans forming the clouds and air currents which warm and irrigate the planet. I thought I was better than people and because I knew so much about space. <clears throat> and every now and then I'd watch all that <laughs> and wonder and wonder, what? This is all cartoons. And every now and then I think to myself, it's weird that we're not watching any actual footage of space. It's all CGI. All DVDs on space are all CGI. There's nothing real. And everyone watches that. They believe it. The narration is all programming. What's above us and what we're on, we're being lied to. Don't we have Hubble? Why don't you point it at the Earth and get some awesome shots of where we live? 
All the pictures and images from space are CGI. None of them are real. We haven't gone past that. What are you telling me that that's okay? We could just gloss over that? And they admit that they're all CGI, except for one in 1972, which is fake. They have one picture. They say one is real. 1972. All the rest are CGI. Like where are the pictures? of earth from space i want to see a picture i want to see tens of thousands of them i want to see the sun over here and the moon over there there's people should have posters and all, all over the world people should have these epic pictures of the earth from space with the moon over here and the sun over there and the planets there's none literally zero they do sometimes exaggerate like claiming they used a nasa camera 1.6 million miles away to take this alleged video of the dark side of the moon. It doesn't take a genius to see how undeniably computer generated this image is. And yet, you think we are the moronic ones? I would rather be thought as a moron for not trusting criminals than a sellout and a traitor for defending them. The reality Look, is... The things that come out of your mouth, are you saying something that a defense attorney would say? Or are you saying something that a prosecuting attorney would say? I, when it comes to the government, that criminal, that's like John Gotti. I'm saying that a prosecuting attorney would say. Not saying like, we'll prove it. We'll prove it. It's a criminal. Without a doubt, whatever's coming from the government, you need, I need some irref... I need the kind of evidence that they would shut down a case if i don't see the evidence why would i believe it? what is gravity you have no idea okay next question <laughs> so you're telling me gravity is strong enough to hold oceans onto it battling inertia from the spin so gravity's holding oceans inertia's trying to pull it out and make it fling skyscrapers would fling off the earth but this gravity's holding these it's so strong it's holding the ocean, but it can't hold a helium balloon Things that are less dense go up. Things that are more dense go down. It has nothing to do with gravity. Where's gravity at with butterflies? You would think that if gravity's so strong it's holding skyscrapers down to it, we would be flat on the ground. There is gravity all the way out to the moon and beyond. <laughs> Long before the theory of gravity was a glimmer in Newton's imagination, the natural physics of density and buoyancy already perfectly explained why apples fall down. Objects fall or rise based on their relative density to the medium surrounding them. Apples fall because they are denser than the air, while helium balloons rise because they are lighter. No gravity necessary. This is why raindrops fall down through the air and air bubbles rise up through water. Everything seeks its relative density and rises or falls until settling accordingly. This is why a tiny pebble sinks to the bottom of the ocean, but gigantic cruise ships and aircraft carriers stay afloat on the surface. Because even though a pebble is so small, its mass, relative to its volume, its density, is more than water, so it sinks. And even though a cruise ship is so large, its mass, relative to its volume, is less than water, so it floats. If Newton's apple had landed in a puddle, he would have seen the apple only fell through the air because it was denser than the air, but then floated on top of the water because it was less dense than water. The natural physics of density and buoyancy was understood and agreed upon for centuries before they changed our textbooks and started NASA. All our space information is coming from NASA. NASA. Yeah. Warner Von Braun was the director of all six moon missions, and he's a Is that not a comic book? That's a Comic, comic book, comic book. My fellow Nasdanos, I am sorry to say I am leaving you to join the elite. Operation Paperclip. In the United States of America. Operation Paperclip. My people in Germany, all they want is freedom and peace. We want to welcome you to the US of A. We must divert their attention. I'm going to make so much money. It's crazy. To brainwash a nation, we will need automation. I want to bring my technology of airplane models. I want to work with Walt. I want to see the best people. We need to get the indoctrination started. If people believe an airplane can go to the moon, we might be able to do it. To brainwash a nation. I will need help. We will need animation. Please bring in help. United States of America. Shit. Oh jeez, who hired these guys? Jesus Christ, these f guys can't act. Bring it up into an airplane 
dark window. You just record the earth from a dark window. We can do that on the computer the afterwards. People will fall the for people it. The people will fall for it. The people will fall for it. The people must know. And the heavens declare the glory of God in his firmament. For sure if this had the word. The people must know. The people have to know. We come from this big bang and fluffy puffy uh, pixie fairy dust and, and unicorn farts and all of a sudden uh, consciousness just, just came out of that. No, it was designed, it's not an accident. Everything according to the bogus Darwinian theory of evolution, all of it points to a godless, atheist, demonic, demon-crat lie. NASA is a corporation and they are the same people who run Disney. In fact, they are very, very similar because what they do is they entertain people. They're not teaching people. Uh, they don't want people to know the truth about the cosmos. They're entertaining them with CGI images. Every image you see, image, not photo, every single one of them, all of those are computer-generated images. They are not photos. Everyone you see on Google is a CGI image. It is not a photo. And you can't tell that they are CGI. Either there's two things wrong with you. You are either or you are mentally deranged. You do not have control of your own mind. You, your mind has been indoctrinated, it has been brainwashed, and you've been duped, and you still believe in Santa Claus and the upside down spinning Santa ball, which the Jesuits invented in 1542. Prior to 1542, every single culture, all our intelligent ancestors will be rolling in their graves knowing that their stupid progeny actually think they live on a spinning globe that people bow down to for their false ideology. Zoom up to Venus, zoom up to Mars, and you will see they are lights. They are stars. Hence, all the intelligent pre-Copernican astrologers, Ptolemaic astrologers like myself, taught that all the planets are wandering stars. They are luminous bodies. Just as the Egyptians said, just as the Greeks and the Mayans and the Aztecs said, just as our intelligent ancestors said. If all the stars, as they say, in every constellation are all at different depths by millions of light years, how come the thousands and thousands and thousands of years of hurtling through the sky, there is no distortion, no difference in luminosity of stars. We're supposed to be flying at breakneck speeds through the galaxy, and yet the same boring stars keep turning over our flat, stationary, plain Earth forever and ever and ever and ever. So we are not moving. We're supposed to be traveling at, get this number in your head, 66,600 mile an hour, 666. That's how fast the Earth is orbiting. If you are groped, that's what you are. You are stupid. Stupid beyond your wildest imagination. That's why we have a horizon, because it's horizontal. That's why we have sea level, because the sea is level. It's not curving. You cannot call it sea level. You will call it sea curve. That's why we have tectonic plates and not tectonic bowls, because those tectonic plates are just that, flat plates. Check out the Suez Canal, 120 miles, no curvature. It never overflows, it never drains. And to all those astrologers out there who think they are astrologers, teaching heliocentrism, like uh, Laura Eisenhower, the uh, granddaughter of her grandfather, 
um, the president of the US, uh, calling herself a heliocentric astrologer. No such thing exists. From a very young age, wondering why the heck did I land in the Eisenhower family? Yeah. I was faced with the opportunity to go to Mars. Some people wonder why the heck didn't you go to Mars? But my intuition told me from really recalling a, a, a youth filled with a lot of insight about what I was here to do was to not go anywhere. That is Laura, you are a false prophet. The line going from the AC to the DC is called the line of the earth and it never moves. AC to DC, ascendant to descendant, that's called the line of the earth according to the astrologers of ancient and that never moves, proving that there is no movement of the earth calculated in any astrological chart reading that you do, you never account the movement or the position of the earth in relation to any of these planets because it's that line of the earth which we call the horizon. Speaking of horizons, some guy, he filmed a mountain. He was flying over Texas and he used his camera to film a mountain. This mountain was supposed to be hidden by 35 miles of curvature with the current circumference of the Earth that we're given. Oh, just sitting straight up, he's just right there. It's not hidden by 35 miles of curvature. It's, it's crazy. As soon as Flat Earthers found out about P900 cameras that, that are made by Nikon, where they can zoom in times 80, I think, and what's going on is like, you can see a boat disappear with your naked eye. And that used to be proof alone. That used to be proof for the curvature of the earth. But now you can watch the boat disappear with your naked eye. And then you could pull up this camera and you could zoom in on the boat that you just watched disappear. And you could bring it right back into full view, perfectly, just perfectly visible. It's crazy. There's no camera tricks, there's no illusions involved. Nothing, it's just perfectly back into view. There's flat earth proofs coming out all the time, every other day, every, every, all just, it's just a matter of if you can find it or not, if, if it's gonna surface in the right areas where people can share it. You know, they're trying to censor this stuff nonstop. There's just a mission to keep this stuff buried. I got mad love for all the Flat Earthers, man. Since day one, everybody's been doing their part, putting in work and just picking up where, the, where they're finding slack, they'll pick it up, you know what I mean? Like there's no spot in Flat Earth that is not covered. They're covering their zone, their quadrant, and they're just taking care of business, man. And if it wasn't for you, if it wasn't for all of us, we wouldn't be where we're at with this flat earth thing, man. They wouldn't be so scared. They wouldn't be trying to cover it up at every turn and stop it everywhere we look. Each and every single flat earther out there has played their part. And we wouldn't be where we're at if it wasn't for you. We wouldn't be heavily censored. They wouldn't be scared to debate us. They wouldn't be trying to censor us at every turn if it wasn't for you guys and you wonderful women exposing flat earth with all your might all your power all the glory to god what a wonderful world we live on so beautiful there's pilots coming out all the time too and they're attesting to the fact that you can't find any curvature ask any airline pilot what the shape of the earth is when they're done laughing at you they'll tell you it's a sphere that's not and that yeah no the ground looks to us like it's standing still did you notice any curvature while we were up there? Uh, no. No? What did you, you see while we were up there? Uh, this is the blue sky, white clouds. Yeah, is it flat or? Pretty flat. Pretty flat? Yeah. Okay, right. thank you. I was reading a lot of stuff on the flat earth. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. True, true. That's true? Yeah. Okay, yeah. alright, cool. All right. God bless, brother. Did you notice any curvature while we were up there? Curvature? No. No? There's no, no curvature? It's just all flat. Casey, how are you, mate? Yeah, Pleased to meet you, guys. Yeah. There's no way this curvature. We're around on the flat, aren't we? Yeah. 
Yeah. We are, aren't we? Well, pancakes, Thank you. Mate. <laughs> well, pancakes. Most pilots know their plane is flying over a plane, a stationary plane, always a smooth and level flight. We never feel the plane dipping its nose down. We only feel the landing. Which flight route matches reality in your mind? If you chose the left, you may need medical attention. Everything beneath you while flying is level and motionless, just as expected, flying over a stationary plane. Sometimes it's hard to see far ahead of you, but other times... We could probably see the Rockies from Kansas. Wow. Clear. It's a clear day, but if it's smoky or hazy, obviously we can't see much. The world is, is so generous in its beauty, and, and you do your best to, to take pictures of it. It's just, it's just flat and gorgeous. Silly actor not. You took the words right out of my mouth. Earth is flat and gorgeous, but they trick you to believe something else. Not every pilot instantly connects the dots and keeps quiet. Sometimes, it can hit them 25 years later. Waarom heb ik dat nooit eerder gezien na 25 jaar in het cockpit? Dus um, zo geïndoctrineerd zijn we dus allemaal. Het is een mooi moment. Ja, het is toch het is gewoon, het is ook gewoon heel vervelend. Het is gewoon heel vervelend. Dat je daar al die jaren naar hebt gekeken en dat het kwart van nooit is gevallen. En ook zeg maar, toen ik eenmaal wist dat de aarde plat is, dat je naar buiten kijkt en dat je denkt: waarom heb ik nooit gezien hoe plat het eigenlijk is? Better late than never. Most pilots may have skipped over their training manuals. In their flight dynamics summary, section 112 explains all you'll need to know about what you're flying over. Heck, the military knows the same thing. NASA admits it as well. In tons of documents available to the public. They just assumed nobody would pay attention. This comes from the Army Research Laboratory. This one's from the CIA. There's another one from NASA. This report documents the definitions of linear aircraft model for the rigid aircraft of consistent mass flying over a flat, non-rotating Earth. This comes right from our own government. Now, I have available 44 documents. Who do I give them to, sir? Uh, you those to the city clerk, please. Which, Which is this person here. So what I want is a law that's passed that we can't teach anything about the development. We have to teach the truth of how things are. From the documents to the imagery, they are not flying around a curve heading to outer space. They are flying over a stationary flat plane. Stop falling for the illusions. Every rocket goes up and then levels out. Most of NASA's rockets launch from Florida and head towards the Bermuda Triangle. Well, besides the occasional... They're not shy about showing the truth in plain sight. 125 alleged miles up, and they show you our level horizon with a local sun. Then quickly switch cameras to their fisheye lens, as if that didn't just happen. You have to pick one. You can't have both. Looks as if their cameras go about as high as most hot air balloons do before they burst. Who do they think they're fooling? But let me guess, you saw the curvature in the images from satellites. The thousands of magical orbiting aluminum tin cans floating in space. It's all animation and games until one comes crashing down on your squad. Many crashed satellites have been reported the world over. And the one thing they all have in common is giant helium balloons attached to them. Of course, satellite technology is real. We get our weather information, communication equipment, yeah, and even some internet service from them. Look up Google Loon, for example. It's not that they wouldn't use the magical floating satellites if they could, it's that they don't physically exist, nor does the globe. They have been sending these up one at a time since it all began. I will allow them to explain it. And he got a patent on that in 1950. And those early balloons were so large, they didn't have any way to launch them, except they actually launched them from aircraft carriers. Modern scientific ballooning was born. So 
also the genesis for NASA's newly developed super pressure balloon. The, whole, the reason for super pressure ballooning is they have absolutely stable altitude, day, night, and it doesn't matter if you how cold the atmosphere is, they are sealed. So your shape is always the same, you always displace the same amount of air, and therefore you have the same amount of buoyancy all the time. This day to night altitude stability allows super pressure balloons and the sun. Hi, I'm Matt, and this is NASA Now. NASA has been using balloons for science research for over 30 years. The exploration that can be done on balloons is continuing to grow. The standard balloon that I fly is about 660 feet long when it's made. So when it's inflated, it's over 400 feet tall by 440 feet wide. Think of a dome stadium. That's how big my balloons are. So let me get this straight. It is now public knowledge that they send up satellites on massive helium-filled balloons. As you should know, NASA is the largest consumer of helium in the world, for obvious reasons. But the issue with society is that they never critically think. Just think for a second here. If these are sent up to provide the world with all of the important information we need, and I'm sure the entire process is expensive and difficult to accomplish, then please explain to me what in the flat world do these pathetic animations do for you? Do they make you happy inside? Are they so super duper cool that you cannot see past the obvious CGI? The fact of the matter is everything NASA sends up on a balloon simply hovers above our motionless Earth. That is why they rarely speak about orbiting satellites, and of course, they never show footage. Here is some footage of a random evening with a man, the moon, and his Nikon P900. Notice anything floating up there? Forget it, Bart. It's so bright out, you can't see anything in the sky except the Fox satellite. Another remarkable fact about NASA's balloon launches is that many are launched from Antarctica. Is it because we cannot travel past certain parallels to witness their launches with our own eyes? What else are they hiding from us over there? It would be nice if someone was allowed to truly explore Antarctica again. It sure has been a while since the last guy. Greetings to you, my young friend. Our very distinguished guest for this evening is Admiral Richard E. Byrd. I must say that Admiral Byrd, our guest tonight, is not only our greatest living explorer, but he's been an inspiration to countless Americans. Admiral Byrd, is there any unexplored land left on this Earth that might appeal to adventurous young Americans? Uh, yes, there is. Strangely enough, there is left in the world today an area as big as the United States, that's never been seen by a human being. And it's, uh, I think it's quite astonishing that there should be an area as big as that unexplored. But more important than that, it's, uh, it has to do with the future uh, of the nation, for those to come after us, or even uh, during your lifetime. Because it happens to be an untouched reservoir of natural resources. that's never been seen by a human being. Since late 2014, one of the biggest things I've heard, the Earth is flat. Why don't you find the edge and fall off? Why don't you make up an expedition and gather people and go find the edge and take a picture of the edge? Well, my response is, can you fall off the edge of a lake, a pond, an ocean? see if you have any imagination left in that brain of yours and pretend this is all the water in the world this is the 71 percent covered earth filled pond all the water of the world so let's just say this is trillions upon trillions upon trillions of gallons you've got the continent the islands in the middle in the center where all compasses point you can circumnavigate circle the lake or the pond left or right but as you venture outwards towards the banks towards outer space what happens once you pass that 60th degree parallel and you hit the ice wall the ice cliff of Antarctica what happens do you fall off the edge is there an edge here is there an edge here 
because we know the physics of water is defined and maintained level if you've been paying attention. And also water must be contained. It is contained. We climb up the banks and we keep going outward, southward. What happens to their control when millions of people travel? Beyond the 60th parallel. They knew this was gonna get out. They knew people were gonna wake up. What if Star Wars is true? What if this extra terrestrial, these extra terrains, they're telling us the truth, minus the vacuum of space, because they gotta put a Hollywood spin on it, don't they? Star Wars, Star Trek, what if you Globers can have your Star Wars and your Star Trek at the same time? Isn't that awesome? How does that make you feel? The timeline goes as follows. So in 1955, Operation Deep Freeze starts. And when Admiral Richard Byrd gets back, he comes on live television and tells us he found more land the size of North America. They quickly start NASA. President Eisenhower calls over the Nazi traitors in Operation Paperclip to start the Upper Space Mind Control Program. Don't look out there. Look up here. Look, everybody. We're going to the moon. Then, in 1959, 12 nations started the Antarctic Treaty, followed by 42 more nations where they have decided you or I cannot travel or explore any part of Antarctica south or past the 60th parallel without military clearance, without the aid of a guided tour. Do you really think that this is just a coincidence? More. Imagine they find more land. Imagine there is more, more land out there more to explore, more to reside, more resources. You think, um, you think they tell you and I about it? I'm sure a lot of you have heard about my $200,000 globe challenge. And up to this point, no one has been successful at completing the challenge. We've had a few clowns here and there that have stepped up to the plate. Here we go. And uh, claimed victory. But at the end of the day, you can't make water stick to the bottom of a ball, much less spinning, okay? You can't show where sea level turns to sea curve. There's no curvature on the x-axis or y-axis. That stuff is flat. Here's a fair challenge here for Neil deGrasse Tyson. Why don't you get off your fat, lazy butt and out from behind your screens and your scripts? Earth, throughout its life, even when it formed, it was spinning. And it got a little wider at the equator than it does at the poles. So Earth got a little bit wider at its equator than it did pole to pole. So, so you spin, you know, when you spin pizza dough, it kind of flattens out. Like spinning pizza dough. Yeah. You know, it just gets but flat. If you were a cosmic giant and you came up to Earth and you rubbed your finger over Earth's surface, it would feel as smooth as a cue ball to you. Wow. If you shrunk Earth down to the size of a cue ball, yeah. it would be one of the smoothest, roundest cue balls ever made. That's how round Earth is. So it's not actually a sphere, it's an it's oblate. Where it's like pear shape. Neil deGrasse Tyson. It's funny. Six years ago I, I sent a whole bunch of questions for you to answer. Um, and uh, I noticed you haven't answered them. You're not a scientist. You're an actor with a with a couple of science degrees. There's people with uh, those same qualifications flipping burgers in Burger King. Where it's like pear shape. <laughs> so you don't impress me. Neil Disgrace, Tyson, you are a lying Jesuit thug and a deceiver. You are a degenerate from Good luck to all your lying when you're down in doing favors for And remember my name when you're in there, Santos Bonacci. Hey Neil, you talk about pears so much. Why don't you try eating a few, you fat f That's actually good. Hey Neil, if the level in motionless plane is so easily debunked, so easily refuted, then why don't you just debate Eric Dubé? Why don't you get off your fat, lazy butt out from behind your screens and your scripts? And debate Eric Dubé. You've heard the name Eric, Eric Dubé, Dubé, but you're scared, you're chicken <laughs> You won't debate Eric Dubé because you don't have a script and lines and people telling you what to say. You know you'll get demolished why don't you just go, come on a podcast or any type of show, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, maybe an hour, if you've got the b and debate, Eric Dubay. isn't flat. See how much of a man you are there, Mr. Mike Drop. Looks like we're gonna have Eric Dubay, he said he's agreed to do it, talk with Neil deGrasse Tyson. What? Yes. <laughs>
I had asked you to debate one of them flat earth guys. No, I don't. I can't. I, no, no. I know. We talked about it and we we're going to have him on Skype. No, what we do is, and I think this is a diabolical plot, so that the next time we can ship people en masse into orbit, they all want to be the first in line because they know we're going to send them so that they can see the round earth. They're going to be the first ones in space. Just so they can stop annoying the rest of us. I don't, I don't think <laughs> like, you're correct. And I know that you're not correct. Why the backpedaling, Neil? You already agreed to debate me on Joe Rogan's podcast. The show was scheduled, posted on Joe's site, announced on air twice, and then you suddenly decided that you, quote, don't debate flat earthers. What happened? I'll tell you what happened. Someone at NASA told Neil, we're not going to let you go head to head with Eric Dubay because he'll make you look foolish. Prove me wrong. Disruption with all my flat earth homies on the Hitler production. Separate fiction from fact, we're gonna end the corruption. Letting people know the earth is flat, end of discussion. Dave Murphy is your teacher, boy, class is in session. And any Bravos in this bitch to teach you, this is a lesson. Tanner Stewart's in the house, he's gonna show you the ropes. He's gonna school you on how NASA's just a joke and a hoax. Let me introduce you to the rest of my posse. We got Johnny G and Papa and Santos Bonacci. We're at the core of the resistance and we'll never obey. And there's my brother from another mother, Eric Dubay. If he debates Neil deGrasse Tyson, he will rip off his head. I'll rap about it on a beat I made and rip it to shreds. If the earth's a cloth, then how come they can't give an example? Their lies are flimsy, it's a pity. Come on, get on my level. They say the world's a globe, but the evidence doesn't cut it. They just give us cartoon pictures and everyone seems to love it. But the earth's a level plane, whether or not you want it. Take a look and do your research, I bet that you can't debunk it. 23 billion bucks, that's a hell of a fucking budget. Just to lie to everyone and successfully fool the public. If you want to break away from your destiny as a puppet, then research flat earth, but don't be upset when you can't debunk it. They really can't prove their theories. Come and get on my level. Something's fishy, these fools are shifty. Come and get on my level. They can't trick me, their lies are silly. Come and get on my level. It's a pity they treat us shitty. Come and get on my level. Hurry quickly, we must get busy. Come and get on my level. Yeah, it's risky, but just stick with me. Come and get on my level. Can you hear me? Please don't be dreary. Come and get on my level. Don't be pimpy, you people really need to get on my level. Flat horizon. is the truth. Sean Hibbler, he's a legend. Nobody could make a documentary as good as Sean Hibbler. <laughs> <laughs>